G'day, and welcome to the AOS Coach sneak peek into the 2022 Fire Slayers Battle Tome. Now, Games Workshop were kind enough to send this to me in advance. However, I am under no obligation to do this review, nor do they have any control or see any of the content before it's uploaded to YouTube. In this video, I'm going to focus on the key War Scroll changes that I noticed, as well as the points changes, the new grand strategies, the new battle tactics. I will break it to you, there are no new battalions for you Fire Slayers folks, but if it makes you feel any better, the IDK players didn't get any either. To avoid making this video too long, I've separated the Allegiance abilities, the artifacts, the command traits, the battle line options in another video, so feel free to watch that video either before this one or to go back after it. It's already available on the channel if you're watching this on the day of premiere. Now you will find a book full of narrative gems uh wonderful art you'll see the path to glory rules if you're playing a path to glory campaign you will see a detailed map of akshi known as the great parch and you will get a unique code that you'll be able to apply these new rules in your aos apps you've always got them on the go so instead of spoiling the lore and telling you what happens let's actually just get into the rules and see what is happening when it comes to the war scroll changes and the match play rules. There are four extra grand strategies to choose from in addition to whatever you're playing in your battle pack. Guarded lineage will be completed if there is one friendly auric rune father and one or more friendly auric rune sons on the battlefield. Defend the lodge is completed when there is no enemy units wholly within your territory. Oath Takers and Skull Breakers is completed if uh, there are four battle tactics that you've completed and each of those battle tactics were completed from the Oaths of the Battle list. So that's the battle tactic specific for you. So choose four of your own home battle tactics and score them. You'll score Oath Takers and Skull Breakers. Finally, the Masters of the Forge is completed if there are any invocations under your command on the battlefield. Out of the four new grand strategies, if I had to pick one, my favorite would be the Masters of the Forge, primarily because I'm in much more control. I get to keep one of my priests around long enough. I pop off the runic firewall near, I don't know, my magma pizza oven, and I get the plus one to the cast, and I score my grand strategy. Now, I probably wouldn't take these right now at a, to a competitive tournament unless I wasn't allowed to use the generic ones, but... Right now, probably there's some decent ones in there. Maybe a Magma Droth build would really benefit from the Guarded Lineage because you're already going to be running a lot of Rune Fathers and Rune Sons, but uh, a couple of interesting options nonetheless. Now, when it comes to battle tactics, there are six new battle tactics to choose from that you can use in addition to the ones from the battle pack. Hold the line, blah, blah, blah. Now, settle a grudge. So when you pick this battle tactic, you get to pick one of the enemy units that are still on the battlefield. So any of those units that have been doing damage to you, when you pull out that battle tactic, find one that has done damage and still on the table. You get to complete this battle tactic if you destroy that particular unit from your Book of Grudges in this turn. Absolutely love this. I expect every Fire player to be using this one. Beast Slayer, you get to pick one enemy monster and one friendly hero. And you complete this tactic if that monster is slain by wounds caused by that hero during the turn. Very fire slayery. Absolutely love this one. Grimney knows no mercy. You get to complete this tactic at the end of the turn if there are any friendly Vorkite Berserker units in the battlefield and all of them are within three inches of the enemy. Again, you want to be going up into the face of your enemy. Make sure that if, they, if all your Vorkites are in combat, you will score this one. An honorable death will pick one friendly hero and you're going to complete it if that hero is slain during that turn and there are enemy models that were also slain by attacks made by that hero so grimrath berserker is certainly screaming your name here or maybe is it the doom seeker um you know either way those heroes who are going in to do mass damage but probably die um very very um very focused towards them probably now, Seize by Force, you get to pick this one if you control less objectives on the table than your opponent. Now, you complete it if you now control more objectives than your opponent. So you can't pull this out if you already have all the objectives. You've got to wait till you're behind, at least on the table. You know, they own two, you own one, 
boom, pull it out, score two, you score this battle tactic. And then finally, you can uh, pick one enemy hero and pick this tactic if the enemy hero is slain by wounds caused the attacks by the fire steel throwing axe during this turn. Interesting one. I don't know if I'd want to bank a battle tactic on throwing axes, but maybe you're up against, I don't know, Skaven and Gloom Spike Gits. Maybe someone's a bit more fragile, but, you know, with not, not a good armor save. And I would expect all Fire Slayers players moving forward to be personally carrying around a book of grudges. And if you ever play me with Fire Slayers and you don't have a book of grudges, I will deduct sports points from you. So please go out right now, go buy a book of grudges. Now strap yourself in because there are plenty of updates when it comes to the War Scrolls. Some things have minor changed, some things have majorly changed. I'm going to try to capture as many of those changes as possible, other than just showing you the War Scroll. I don't think it adds any value, which is why this is not man read book time. The Auric Rune Smiter on Magma Droth has 16 wounds now, so it gained 2 wounds, but it did also get a plus 1 to their bravery, movement and stay and save remains the same. The, the Lashing Tails and Volcanic Blood remain the same. You did lose the Grand Ritual of Awakening, and the Runic Empowerment did change. And what it's changed to is that it is a prayer now that has got an answer value of 3. And depending on how you've equipped your Rune Smiter, so if you have a uh, Runic Iron, the range is 12. If you have the Forge Key, it is range 18. If you are carrying the Runic Iron, you get to re-roll your chanting rolls. So pros and cons, do you want the extended range or do you want the re-roll potential? I'll leave that up to you. Um, if answered of the if Runic Empowerment is answered, you get to pick one friendly Fire Slayers unit that's wholly within range, 12 or 18, and is visible to the chanter. And what happens is you essentially give plus one to the wound rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of the hero phase. I like it. Great little support piece for your uh, Fire Slayers, whether you're going a Magma Droth build or you just want to have something that's a bit more mobile going around the board, supporting where you need it to be. The Auric Rune Father on Magma Droth has gained two wounds as well, so it now has a, a wound characteristic of 16. So, by the way, does the, the Auric Rune Sun on Magma Droth. And it brackets at wound 7 taken, 11 taken, and 14 taken. So you'll notice that the profile degrades a whole lot less. There is some minor boost to the attack profile. Uh, you'll get an extra attack on the lock key grand axe. You will see that the claws and horns now hit on threes. And the roaring fire stream shooting attack has changed from this weird D3, D6 mortal wound sequence that you used to have. And it's now uh, the number of attacks is equal to the amount of models in the unit. And uh, is a, basically, you, you roll a dice, it hits on a two, uh, It's if it's unwounded, you roll uh, threes to wound, rend one for one damage. And there's an interesting little additional mechanic to the Roaring Fire Stream. And what happens is if you don't shoot in this shooting phase, let's say it's turn one, no one's in range, I, I don't elect to shoot. I get to hold on to this fire and it creates a, a raging inferno. What that basically means is that in the next turn that I go for a shooting attack, I get to apply an additional Ren minus two for the attack. So it'll turn the roaring fire stream into a Ren three attack. Consider it like a power up. Once you've used your power up, once you've used your raging inferno, the attack sequence goes back to normal. So you're back to your Ren minus one. However, you can absolutely do that again. That's not a once per battle thing. It's just if you don't choose. I don't think it stacks either, so it's, I, I, I don't imagine it's going to be like Ren minus five, things like that. But maybe wait for the FAQ. But at least, if nothing more, you're getting a Ren, additional Ren minus two against your Roaring Fire Stream. The Lashing Tail and the Volcanic Blood, they remain the same as they were on their old War Scroll. But you did lose the Stare Down, the Weapon Breaker, and the Steadfast Advance Command Ability. In its place, you did gain the Lords of the Lodge, which is a once per battle at the start of the combat phase. You get to pick one friendly unit on the battlefield, and you get to unleash the Wrath of Grimnir. If you unleash the, unleash the Wrath of Grimnir, until the end of that phase, you get to add one to the attack characteristic 
of melee weapons used by friendly fire slayers units why they are wholly within 12 inches of your rune father on magma drop so that's a nice little big base there wholly within 12 inches very generous uh plus one attack characteristic boost you're going to be giving out a good one once per battle finally when it comes to the magma droths we do have the rune sun on magma droth now the worm slayer javelin has rend minus two in shooting which is awesome uh, i previously mentioned the the roaring fire stream which is the same as the rune father the ancestral war axe has gained plus two attacks and it's also getting a plus one to wound benefit from previous war scroll attack characteristics um the worm javelin is now two inches so it actually went down from three inches down to two inch range um it did gain plus two attacks it is now hitting on fours and it's now rend minus two so a little bit of a difference there when it comes to the worm javelin the lashing tails the volcanic blood are the same the molten battering ram command ability uh, has been lost so that ability is no longer there and one of the changes that's happened on this war scroll um in the, in the wording is the vying for glory so it's still there but it's just been modified and what it looks like now is if the unmodified hit roll for this attack that is made by a unit is targeting a monster so should your uh rune sun be targeting a monster and to hit it hits on a six so if you hit on a six um that attack will cause a number of mortal wounds equal to the tar the damage characteristic and then the attack sequence ends so um it's not going to have any effect on the mount so depending if you take yourself the javelin you take a war axe or whatever you your loadout might be um you will do mortal wounds so maybe you want to take a weapon that has more attacks in order to trigger more of those sixes to hit as you know an ability obviously they don't hit on sixes but the ability triggers on six so a couple of great options and keep in mind this auric rune sun on magma droth can be a battle line option when it comes to support heroes it's probably worth calling out that there is a new retinue rule so your auric uh, rune father your rune son uh, there they have this thing called a retinue where at the start of the first battle round um, before determining who has the first turn you get to pick one friendly auric hearth guard or hearth guard berserker unit to be the retinue of each of your rune fathers or rune sons that's that rule and then there's an additional rule that you'll find called the royal retinue and what happens with the royal retinue is before you allocate a wound or a mortal wound to this unit your rune father your rune son uh or you know essentially what happens is instead of making a ward roll or a save roll immediately um if this unit is within three inches of its retinue you roll the dice on a one or a two that wound or mortal wound is allocated as normal to the rune father or rune son on a three plus that wound or mortal wound will be allocated to the retinue instead to the hearth guard berserker to the um to the auric hearth guard uh, and we did mention that the grim wrath berserker could be a part of the retinue if that is the oath that it wanted to take so there was another option there for you the great news as well something that was quite unique and surprised me is if the retinue has a ward save you are allowed as a part of this bodyguard rule to actually make a ward roll before allocating the wound or mortal wound so i know some people were concerned about the um the ability to deflect mortal wounds and wounds from your um heroes to your troops so the royal retinue will be one way that you can get more durability from your squishier smaller heroes the rune father has lost the weapon breaker the stare down and the lodge leader command ability but in its place it did gain some rules like dauntless assault uh, and the royal retinue that i just spoke about as well as the lords of the lodge which was um the ability that i just spoke about with the rune father on magma droth around giving the uh the ability within wholly within 12 inches once per battle to you know all friendly fire slayers the plus one attack characteristic so again uh, if you're doing more of a, a foot trip, is it Grey Fear, whatever it was, um, you could also be tapping into that ability. When it comes to the Rune Master, it did lose the Holy Seeker rule. It did gain a High Priest of Zagrim, as well as the Wise Council. 
So Volcano's Call has changed. It's still a three plus to prayer. You still get a reroll for the Runic Iron. And the rule has changed a little bit that um, you get to pick a terrain feature wholly within range and you get to roll a dice for each model within one inch of the terrain. On a roll of a six, it does a mortal wound. I'm pretty sure that was the old rule. It's still there. Uh, no, nothing is lost there. But what you've gained is in addition until your next hero phase that terrain feature blocks visibility so it acts exactly the same as a uh, awakened wildwood in the sylvaneth faction so you're going to be able to block a whole bunch of visibility through this volcano's call which will be great in the current shooting meta that we're kind of dipping our toes in right now i did mention that you've gained a wise counsel and you've also gained the high priest of uh, zagrim Wise Council, at the start of the hero phase, you if your general is within three inches of a Auric Rune Master, you're going to gain yourself one extra CP, which is pretty sweet. Your um, High Priest of Zagrim, if this unit is a part of your Fire Slayer's army, surprise, it will be, uh, it will know all of the prayers from the Zagrim's Blessing Prayer Scripture. So you're going to get a whole bunch of additional prayers in addition to the ones it already knows. So should you bring in this Rune Master into, I don't know, Cities of Sigma, that wouldn't work. But if you are keeping it within Fire Slayers, it's going to know the spell law, which is awesome. Your prayer law. Your Rune Sun has lost the Worm Slayer Javelin, and it has lost the Dauntless Assault. Uh, in its place, you have gained the Royal Retinue, what we just previously mentioned about bouncing wounds and mortal wounds off to uh, set, uh, set troops. Um, and you've also got the change to Vying for Glory. So we've already talked about Vying for Glory. That is um, doing mortal wounds to monsters if the unmodified hit roll was a six and the damage being equal to the, um, the damage characteristic of the weapon. So if it normally would do three damage and you roll that six, it's just three mortal wounds. And um, it's only for the, the primary attacker, not any mounts obviously in this case that doesn't matter but on you know rune suns on magma drops it doesn't work on the claw attacks and tail attacks for the for the magma drops but again consistent across rune sun on foot and rune sun on magma drop now your auric rune smiter the magmic tunneling is still the same so no changes there happy days and your runic empowerment is the same as the auric rune smiter on magma drop you do get to re-roll if you're equipped with the uh, Runic Iron, and it is going to give a plus one to Rune roll for the target Fire Slayer unit that you pick until the next hero phase. So again, a lot of consistencies between the hero on Magma Droth and then that same hero on foot. When it comes to your Battlesmith, it has lost the Nun Shall Defile, the Icon ability. The Icon of Grimny has changed and it has gained the Bard of the Lodge ability. So the Icon of Grimnir, what is that? Well, fire, friendly Fire Slayers units that are wholly within 12 inches of this unit will gain a 6-up ward. So a nice little way to keep your troops around. But in addition, once per battle in your hero phase, you can pick one friendly unit on the battlefield with this ability to plant the Icon of Grimnir. If you do so, until the start of your next hero phase, those friendly Fire Slayers units wholly within 12 inches are going to have a 5-up ward save instead of 6. So a lot of durability from the Battlesmith. I can almost see two Battlesmiths on the table, maybe even three depending on how your points kind of go. But certainly a Battlesmith seems like the model that you don't want to leave home without unless you're obviously running the Magma Droth build because the, the Battlesmith just won't keep up with those Magma Droths. Bards of the Lodge is a new rule that you're going to gain, and essentially what it does is when you use the Rally Command to bring back models to the unit, you will rally those models back on a 4+, plus instead of a 6+. plus. So uh, a great way to bring back those bodies. It might work really nicely with the uh, Auric Flame Keeper, who is trying to get a whole bunch of buffs, but also is okay for units to die around the the Auric Flamekeeper, but either way, uh, I would not be leaving home right now without at least one Battlesmith. The other model I'd talk about here is the Underworld's Warband, the um, the Chosen Axes led by Fajal um, Grimnir. You've lost your Grimnir's Blessing, which was the 5-up ward. You've lost the Stare Down. You've lost the Weapon Breaker. You've lost the Honor, our Oath's Command ability. You've gained the uh, Royal Retinue, and you've gained Dauntless Assault. 
Um, and uh, the royal retinue, as we've already talked about, is that three up transfer of wounds to the retinue, um, which probably would be the chosen axes and the dauntless assault. I don't think I've talked about this just yet, but the, anyone who's got the dauntless assault, basically, if the retinue hasn't fought in combat and it's within three inches of the enemy and wholly within 12 inches of, um, of Fajul. Uh, Grimnir, uh, it is going to immediately fight. So the Dauntless Assault, a uh, great way to get, uh, I guess, two activations before your opponent has responded. The other support heroes to talk about here is that there were no real identified changes for the Doomseeker, for the Grimwrath Berserker. Uh, they both were pretty consistent with what we saw from the, up the update in Broken Realms Bellicor. The Auric Flame Keeper is the same as what it was in Fury of the Deep. So that was that limited edition box that came out about a month ago. Um, I'm not going to repeat myself because this video is probably already going to be too long. If you haven't seen the rules for the Auric Flame Keeper, um, do check the link that I've just posted above in this video. And you can go watch my review and talk about um, the Flame Keeper to see its rules but uh otherwise if you've already seen it no changes you don't need to worry about it it is what it is speaking of no changes the same is room is true for your hearthguard berserkers your auric uh, hearthguard your volkite berserkers they are the same as what was updated in fury of the deep now um, a couple of key changes i will call out again if you want to see what those changes were go watch my video on the fury of the deep i break it down i've got the rules here on screen but if you want more meat around that bone go watch that video the key to to this change probably would be the fact that the volkite berserkers do have two new war scrolls so instead of it being one unit with multiple options there is the uh, Volkites with hand axes and there's Volkite with sling shields and they are pointed differently. Otherwise, I've called out some major ones on the screen. Go watch my video if you want more information. Now, when it comes to the invocations, they are remaining the same as what they were on Warcom. So if you've been playing with invocations or if you've seen them on the Warhammer community site being updated for third edition, it is still the same. There were some minor text changes when it comes to the Molten Infernoth, but it really doesn't change the way you play it. It basically just said that uh, if the invocation is still on the table in the next turn, the commanding turn can move at 2d6. But otherwise, it's not world-breaking. Um, you know, it is, it is the same as what it was. Talking about something that isn't the same as what it was is the points. And I wonder what you're going to say in the comment section when you see the points here. Because you, as you can see here on the table, there is plenty of movement when it comes to units. And they're all basically going up, except your invocations all went down five points. Uh, I want to give a massive shout out to uh, Bale Grimnir. Um, I had no idea what this unit was for a long time. A couple of Google searches and I found myself in a White Dwarf expansion from like 2018 or 2019 where there was this named magma droth hero uh or his bale grim on flame spitter so uh either way long story short that that model is not in the uh the battle tome nor does it have points so uh we can assume rip not around anymore the biggest hits is going to come from your magma droths and they all went up approximately 65 to 80 points depending on the variant um, they did gain extra wounds. They have gained extra abilities. I think Magma Drops are definitely stronger uh, in this particular battle tome versus the last one. So don't completely freak out that the points went up. They're probably cheap as chips. They're probably now fairly pointed, give or take. They might go down, they might go up slightly, but I think they're relatively fairly pointed now for what you get from them. Um, there were some other minor points adjustments, you know, really coming down to things like the Auric Rune Father without a mount, uh, the Battlesmith, the Hearthguard Berserkers, and the Chosen the chosen uh, Axe Warband um, all went up slightly. Com compare this to Deepkin. Deepkin got a lot harder hit in the points adjustments. Yours are minor tweaks, 10 points here, 20 points here. Your Volkite's already changed in the Fury of the Deep as well. So some of them look flat, and that's just because the change happened about a month ago. But... Uh, as you can see here on the screen, you know, your Hearthguard Berserkers went up to uh, went up 25 points. Uh, what else? Your Hearthguard Berserkers just, your, sorry, your Auric Hearthguards went up five. 
you can see it on screen 10 15 5 30s a whole bunch of different changes but hey the doom seeker didn't go up and that's probably the most important story here so as always the true list tech is going to come out once we've received the faq it's really why i don't go too deep in the combinations and what to focus on because you know i could mention one thing right now and you know maybe some of you go out and go buy x model you'll go out and buy i don't know battlesmiths or you know the the chosen axes and you know it gets up faq'd and it makes that combination redundant so i'm always hesitant to tell you exactly where to be focusing or where some of the good combinations are at first more for you to think about where this plays in you the models that you already own and how you start formulating your lists but there are plenty of changes for you fire slayers and look i don't expect you to be the next unbeatable force at tournament but i do think that you've got some nice updates there are some minor improvements across the war scrolls and while it might not seem like massive overhauling like nurgle saw nurgle saw a massive change to their faction and the way they play i think what you're seeing is a move away from resiliency but leaning more into the combinations of attack melee damage rend so uh, I, I think you'll be surprised to see how much more damage you're going to do especially when you start applying um some of those you know pluses to uh, to, to rend and you know being able to do some mortal wounds um but i think your list construction will be similar to what you had it with previously unless you're someone who wanted to focus around magma droths and you haven't really been able to do a heavy magma droth build previously now you obviously can so that'll obviously change but otherwise you're always going to run your foot troops whether you want to run your volkite your hearth guard your auric hearth guard whatever it might be you'll you'll be building around it and i think one of the biggest complaints that i had through the fury of the deep videos was that you appeared to lose a lot of ward protection because they were on war scrolls things like um uh, i can't remember what, which unit it was but you know there was some a, a lot of units that had war scroll i think, I think volkites might have had it but they got removed and I, I hope you're seeing here that the the light in the tunnel is through royal retinue the duty of unto death um some of the uh, allegiance abilities that give you a ward there's a whole bunch of ways to get that durability outside of the bodyguard rules that you used to have now i'd love to hear from you in the comments section on what you think about the war scroll changes with fire slayers um now that you've probably listened to the war scroll changes and the allegiance of changes what really stood out for you and you know how has some of these changes impacted your list design was there some secret list tech that i skipped over is there anything that you just want to mention um you know i, I hope you found this video uh, interesting and you have some new ideas for yourself to unpack and i will be booking a whole bunch of videos with expert fire slayers players um people who have gone to tournaments and top 10 top five people who know their their stuff and will have some good discussions on how they're looking at these new rules and planning to make the most of it thanks for sticking around until the end i hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas if you did i would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below the conversation will continue over on Discord, so links down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigma conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.